Hello, today is a special day because the Viper V2 Pro has finally released and I have a copy in hand here that I can talk about with you guys. Simply put, this mouse is insane. After using it for a little less than a week now, I'm almost positive this will be my new main. I have been incredibly impressed. The big reason here is that it is a truly perfect product. Some people have had issues with their individual copies, but mine here is basically uncriticable. I may have just been blessed by the QC gods, but I am still blown away nonetheless. There's absolutely zero creaking or flexing, even when I squeeze it in weird ways. This mouse is the epitome of tank-like build quality. Also, this all occurs despite it feeling nearly hollow due to how low its density is. It's crazy. Also, no rattling whatsoever to speak of. Everything is in its place and properly mounted. The score wheel is actually like half a millimeter off center and maybe a little bit tilted, but if you care about this, then bruh. My clicks actually do have a tiny bit of wobble, but this wobble actually is just about as much as a vaxi button, so it's a complete non-issue. It is actually impossible to notice while clicking, even while deliberately sliding my finger along it. It is simply perfect. Unless, of course, I do come from this weird awkward angle and again slide my fingers up, then there is a little bit of wobble, but the bigger issue here is actually shattering my wrist, not the wobble, so they're perfect clicks. And not only is it a perfect product, it is also exactly what I needed right now, because recently I've actually been having a bit of a main crisis. If you asked me just a couple months ago, I would have said that my main mouse was a G303 Shroud Edition, no question. This mouse has a shape that is practically made for my hand. I've still never had something click this well. It is an absolute dream for pincher claw. And it's insanely high quality. Logitech mice are always built different. They are the best of the best, and this is no exception. So it is pretty much my ideal mouse overall. But recently, I've actually changed my grip style up a little bit. I've stopped pinching the hump almost completely now, and instead I use a much more relaxed claw style, where instead I pull the back of the mouse into my hand. This feels great and has been an improvement on every other shape besides the G303. It feels super consistent, comfortable, and most importantly, is very versatile. I can use any mouse now, and I'm no longer restricted to these large humped mice. But the issue is, like I said, the G33 Shroud Edition does not play well with this grip, and instead I have to go back to my old style, which is surprisingly quite difficult, much more so than I'd ever thought it would be. And even after swapping back and forth between mice a lot to try to figure out how to reduce this travel time, it still takes a couple of solid days in order to get completely comfortable. Once I'm good, it's golden, and it's still my top performer, no questions asked, but only after I give it a couple of full days. So it is really unoptimal for me to use this mouse as a main. This is because usually I like a system where I have one main go-to mouse that I always pick up when I want to test out a mouse pad or when I want to play my most consistently in-game. I do always think that you want to keep at least one part of your system consistent in order to serve as a baseline. Did this help you accurately assess if another mouse is actually better than your current main? And also isolate the differences between different mouse pads now that you're not introducing another variable of a different mouse. And then on top of the main, I'll have another mouse that I'm more messing around with. Whether that's something I'm testing out and want to see how it stacks up to the competition, or as more of a secondary option, like the x Lite Wires has been, in order to bring a little bit more variety to my setup. But regardless of how I set up the secondary, I'll always end up bouncing between these two fairly fluidly, often between matches or after a couple of Kovacs runs. So within this system, I can't really properly integrate the G303SE, because it just takes way too long. I can't really afford to take days to adapt to it, it's just not practical. Of course this wouldn't be an issue if I was just trying to find the best mouse for me personally. If that were the case, I would only ever use the G303SE. That is such an easy decision. The mouse is just that good and it performs that well for me personally. But I am someone who likes using different mice just for the sake of using different mice. And even far before I started actually making reviews, I ended up using a similar, pretty system to the one I have going. This is just how I've always been. I am a huge fan of variety. And unfortunately the G303 has stood in the way of this variety recently. So for a new main mouse, I have been having to search elsewhere. And where I've landed the most recently is the Starlight 12 Small. It is an insane mouse It has actually become my personal favorite. 43 gram wireless is incredible. It is so snappy and so addicting. I love it. It is truly so much fun to use. The shape is really good too. It is excellent for control since it is so thin and low and I have a great range of motion due to its small size. So it's just been an incredible mastery overall and what I've been forming the best with. The ceiling on this mouse is truly exceptional, but it is embarrassingly low quality. I have hella side flex I can actually feel during my normal mouse grip. The main clicks are also just a little bit off since they are too heavy and the latency is pretty poor. The score will as well, pretty funky and you will get occasional miss inputs. 
and there are holes on the side where he grip them, which is just cringe. So overall, this is a mouse that I actually don't really want to use, despite how much I enjoy it. These quality concerns are that bad. So it's a very frustrating experience. It is so close to perfection, it hurts. So even a mouse as insane as this still isn't quite there for me. And for every other mouse I have tried, there is a similar story here of some major drawback holding it back from perfection. Like the Z13, for example. This was the next obvious place I went to after the Starlight 12, since it is still one of the best shapes I have ever used. It offers a truly phenomenal balance of support and mobility that is super universal, and it is another near-perfect shape for me personally since it offers everything that I want in a mouse. So it has been one of my most used options since its release. It also doesn't have a bad feature set either. Sub 70 grams feels fine. I would of course like it to be lighter, but it's okay. The cable as well has never been an issue, so it still feels good feature-wise. The only problem though is that I've used it so much that the quality has gotten significantly worse over time. It always had this issue of minor side flex on this thumb part here. I was able to fix it by tightening the screw underneath the feet here, but extensive use has made it significantly worse, and now it is always there. It is still fine while aiming, and I don't really notice it here, so it is not unusable, but every time I adjust my grip I can feel it distinctly, and it's almost like the side clicks in. It is so bad. So I end up having the same issue here, of a potentially perfect mouse plagued by poor quality. Now, quite frustrated with this poor quality, I went back to the NP01, since this is an insanely well-made mouse, and is probably pound for pound the highest quality I have ever used. It is truly tank-like, completely flawless build quality, perfect buttons, and an amazingly premium coating, so it fixes all of these previous issues I've had. And it has also recently become a personal favorite shape. You have absolutely insane stability due to how the curvy this hump is in your hand, and it feels great for control due to how these asymmetric sides really cradle your fingers. I have also gotten used to the lack of range of motion that this large hump offers, so I am actually more positive on this shape since I've reviewed it. It's so good and easily one of my current favorites, but it is simply too heavy. This was not an issue not too long ago, even when I reviewed it, but recently I have been absolutely spoiled by lightweight wireless options. So now this almost 80 grams weight feels quite clunky, and I also can notice this Vaxi cable a lot more than I ever have. So even this missed, but on the feature side this time. Now fed up with the weight of Vaxi mice, I went to the X-Lite V2. 60 gram wireless here is choice, it is super well implemented, and most importantly a massive breath of fresh air. And now, unlike Final Mouse, the quality matches this feature set too, and offers a truly premium experience that is built impressively well, especially when considered the price. But unfortunately, it is still an Ergo. Not a bad Ergo, mind you, it is actually my favorite one. But for potential main mouse, I will always want an Ambi. I'm just so much more comfortable with those designs, and these slanted buttons, while fun sometimes, just aren't it for a main. So seemingly, any mouse I try has something wrong with it. Whether that be poor quality, too high of a weight, or just a bad shape for me personally. Everything has always missed in some key way. So what I ended up doing was crawling back to the S2C, my old reliable, the mouse that has never let me down. It has always had a good shape that works out particularly well for my new relaxed style. It is quite boring since there's not really much going on at all, but it works. The feature set as well is alright, the weight is usable, not great, but fine, and again, a good cable. So it is satisfactory in this regard. Of course, nothing about it is really exceptional, it doesn't rise above in any way, but it also doesn't suck in any way. Which at this point is a godsend, I am literally at the point where not sucking is a positive thing. And also this lack of any faults makes it so that this is a mouse that I can just use without thinking about it, which I can always appreciate and what I feel helps a lot with consistency. So because of this, it has been getting a lot of use recently, yet it is still not my current main. That title has gone to the GPX lately, because lightweight wireless is simply too good. I'm addicted. And Logitech wireless always just hits different, so that is enough for me to justify using it all on its own. Everything else about the mouse is also pretty decent though. It has a bit of that S2 effect where it is so boring that it's actually kind of good. The shape, for example, is practically nothing. It works out fine for my grip. Not great, just fine. But most importantly, it is very easy to swap from to other mice because almost every other shape will share some sort of similarity with this, since it is just so universal, so I will never be completely alienated when swapping off of it. And the quality is good too. The click certainly leaves something to be desired, there is not enough tactility for me here, so it is not a perfect mouse, so this part really lets me down. But everything else is fine, so it's not that bad. 
But that's really the issue with everything here. It has only ever been just fine. And every mouse I've tried has had some sort of issue. Nothing has amazed completely. The GPX has certainly risen above the rest, but only slightly. It is still not quite there yet, and is still missing something. And this is why the Viper V2 Pro is truly amazing. Because it is a mouse that takes after my current main heavily. I mean, look at their designs. It's pretty blatant. But it approves upon it in every way that I wanted. And now, finally, I have a mouse that truly has everything. First up, I don't have to deal with these mediocre clicks anymore. Again, I never had a problem with the GPX clicks. They're all right, but Armon's always just leave something to be desired. And now that I've experienced these new opticals from Razer, I don't know how I ever dealt with these. They are infinitely better. The actual switches themselves are so sharp and snappy that it keeps them feeling very responsive. But the actual tensioning is still pretty heavy, which keeps their tactility. So they have excellent feedback, which is great for click timing in game. Overall, they're quite balanced and incredibly satisfying. I'm a really big fan of these. The pre and post travel is well tensioned too, so they are just a phenomenal click. They are even quickly becoming a personal favorite of mine, even over Vaxi. They are that good and that sharp. And most importantly, it just blows the GPX out of the water, so much so that I actually feel it helping in my gameplay. My click timing is noticeably better on this mouse. It is that much of an upgrade, and I think it is just due to this improved click feel. Next, I don't have to settle for the GPX potato anymore. This is a mouse that actually has a shape, and is an improvement in every way here. Most importantly, I feel, is that it is far more curvy on the sides, which I feel helps to lock in your fingers a lot more, which makes it much easier to pick the mouse up and manipulate it with your fingers. Also, it ends up setting your grip style more by getting you guides on where to actually place your fingers along the shell, so your style is going to end up being a little bit more consistent. With the GPX, since the sides are almost completely flat, I swear I pick the mouse up a little bit different every single time, so this is again a great improvement. The buttons as well also end up feeling a little bit lower. You'll see here that they're not actually lower, and instead it's about the same height at the front. But most importantly, the Viper's buttons are not nearly as angled, and the comfort grooves are far deeper so it ends up feeling a little bit lower in practice. This to me has always helped to make my mouse control feel a little bit more precise, and I definitely do notice an increase in overall control compared to the GPX. Of course, some of this does have to do with the more curvy sides locking your fingers more, but it is definitely due in part to the difference in the button height. So it is always super important to try to get these as low to the pad as possible for me personally. Then finally, the back on the Viper is also much lower, which is great. I never thought I'd actually say this as a positive thing because I've always been a fan of fat humps, but with this new grip style I've been using, this is far less important for me. Since now all my stability comes from pulling it into the back of my hand. So having these flares here are far more important. Since here is where contact actually happens and support is gained. Now with this new grip, the GPX's rounded top hits way too deep in my palm. And it just sticks in there in a way that's truly awkward. So I really appreciate this flatter hump a lot now. It frees up this middle part of my hand completely but while still offering support, since it is pretty wide here, it makes contact all along the bottom. This is far more comfortable for me. And offers an increased range of motion, and is not nearly as restrictive. The mouse can move so much more in my hand. So it's great and very balanced, since I do, again, have all that stability down here. But while I have been enjoying the shape, I am still not quite sure about it. I actually never have used the Viper shape before, it's just never something that I picked up, so I am still adapting to it. It will always take some time to wrap her head around a completely new mouse. But it has been feeling better and better by the day, so I am very hopeful here. But I'll have to wait and see if this will actually be my number one. It could certainly get knocked down a peg if it isn't my best shape. I can almost guarantee that it'll still be my main, no matter what, but it doesn't seem infallible in this one regard. I could end up preferring other designs more. But everything else though, golden. It has perfect quality, perfect features, perfect, well, everything. Maybe I could actually critique the coating. I do like Logitech's rubberized finish more, but this raw plastic hasn't actually been that bad and I've had no major issues yet. Just like with the Roshi, it's all right. Not nearly as bad as the Fnatic Bolt for reference. I will still be sure to mess around with the grip tape first though. See if I vibe with that, it could be an improvement. But in the meantime, this mouse is nuts and I absolutely cannot wait to use it more. I will certainly be covering it in a full review after at least a solid two weeks on it. I feel that's the minimum we need to really formulate a solid opinion on a product. This video was really just a random rant about my choice. It's nothing comprehensive. Anyway, hope to see you there. Until next time.